Now, I ain't going to bounce around, damn it, because I got on an ankle brace. You saw what happened to me at All-Star Weekend. But, damn it, it don't matter. I'm back here in studio. My man Shay Shay is chilling out in the ATL. My boy J.J. Reddick is back in the house. Special appearance by J.J. Reddick. He missed me. He ain't going to admit it, but he missed me. Here's the bottom line. Stevens A-list. And I'm going to tell you the top five NBA storylines heading into the second half of the season. J.J., Shay Shay, you know what I'm going to say. The list is fluid. The list is fluid, okay? It's just according to moi, top five storylines. Give me number five on the list right now, please. Bam! Clippers in the finals. I think they got a shot to end up going to the NBA finals for the first time in franchise history, J.J. Reddick. Harden ain't miss a game. Kawhi Leonard was looking all world before he went down. We hoping he gets healthy. Ball George is balling. I'm looking at Norman Powell. I'm looking at Russell Westbrook being the energizer bunny up the bench. Terrence Mann and the rest of the crew. The Clippers got a chance. Could you imagine if the Clippers go to the finals and they win it all? Before they move into the new arena and next and, and open the night at the new arena is the ring ceremony. Oh my lord, I can smell it. We gotta watch that storyline. It ain't top four. Give me five top four though, please. Bam! Damian Lillard and Giannis Antetokounmpo. We know what Giannis brings to the table. We know what Damian Lillard can bring to the table. But will he? Especially with Doc Rivers as a coach now. We got to find out about Milwaukee. What's up? You just going to concede the East to the Boston Celtics? You're going to get eclipsed and usurped by the New York Knicks? What you going to do, great freaking Dame Dollar? When the world is calling upon you. Let's go to top three, though. Please give it to me. Bam! Jason Tatum as the league MVP. The man has been putting folks on notice for years. Didn't play that great in the NBA Finals, but he is a superstar in this league. An incredible kid, role model, the whole nine. We love little Deuce as well. Go ahead, best record in the game with the best player on that team. You win the championship. That kind of face of the NBA we were talking about, J.J. Shea Shea. Excuse me, nothing to talk about if Jason Tatum wins the title. Boom, that's a top three story. It ain't top two, though. Give it to me right now, please. Give it to the world. Ha! Did you think I was going to leave that out, J.J.? Did you think that I wasn't going to have the Knicks as one of my top five stories? Did you see Jalen Brunson? Did you see that MVP candidate, Jalen Brunson? That's right, I said it. Let me tell you something right now. Mitchell Robinson's coming back. I know he's going to come back. Julius is going to come back. That's it right I know he's going to come back. OG and Anobi, when he arrived, they went from like 19th or 20th in defensive efficiency to number one. We know Thibodeau loves that. And by the way, because they've been injured, J.J. Redick, you know what that means? They ain't been around. For Tom Thibodeau to run into the ground, which means they're gonna have fresh legs come playoff time. The New York Knicks, New York, stand up, y'all. Hard to blue skies, baby. Hard to blue skies. Top two story to watch out for. It ain't number one, no. Give me number one. LeBron's last. <sighs> mm. The Los Angeles Lakers were in the Western Conference Finals last year. We can't summarily dismiss that. If LeBron James and Anthony Davis continue to play the way that they play and D'Angelo Russell continues to be as effective as he's been the last few weeks, Rui Hachimura and the rest of the crew comes up and remembers how to play basketball with one another like they were doing in the playoffs, this could be it because the Lakers don't have too many assets. If they don't make a run this year, we don't know if they will. They may be finished for good. Shannon Sharp. That's why I say LeBron... We got to look at that storyline. LeBron, the Knicks, Tatum, okay. Dame Giannis, okay. Clippers. Delivery, excellent. Energy on point. Would, now let's break it down. Shannon, you start. I would, you know what? With the list that you have, I would, put, I would put the Knicks at five. I would put Tatum at four. I would put the Clippers at three. I would put Giannis at, at two. Mm. I would put Giannis and Dame at two. Okay. But I can't believe, and I, I would leave LeBron them there, but I can't believe you ain't got Kevin Durant in book. That team, that ain't no storyline, Stephen A. It is, That's but I don't think it's top five. And not only that, can I get Bill healthy? Can I get Bill healthy, like, like literally continuously on the court so I can see Booker, Bill, and KD together continuously? I just want to make sure I can rely on that. Jay, before I, I, you I, jump in real quick, what's the grade, Shannon? Like a B? I mean, I, I, I don't really have a whole – you know what? I'm going to give you a C, Stephen A. I'm going to give you a on, C. Come on, man. That's ridiculous, man. See. That is not let's a C. Say, let's C. JJ go. C. Go ahead. Go. 
I'm going to give him a much higher grade. I'm going to give you an A. But first, I just wow. want to hug you. What is happening? This is great physique, man. You look like Thank an athlete. You. Thank you, my man. You look like an athlete. You look good. Wow. You look good. I appreciate it, brother. You look good. I appreciate it. You right. lost so the a, pounds. A, a I found things. them. <laughs> Dissecting this list. It's a great list. Okay. And honestly, as you were going through this list, I was like, man, he's hitting some great storylines. And the list just kept getting better. I would move some things around as well. Okay, sure. I think <laughs> yes. these two... I'll leave this here. These two are my top two storylines. Which ones? Which, Which ones? two? The Clippers, the Clippers in the finals. Okay. Because okay. I, I think they're going to be in the Western Conference finals. Okay. okay. Can, they, can they get over the hump and get to the finals for the first time in franchise history? This is the one that's just super interesting. We touched on Doc Rivers taking okay. over the team midseason. Okay. Right? They get yep. a rookie head coach to start yep. the season. Right. They got two top 75 players. Mm -hmm. I love it. I'd change this. Will Tatum win finals MVP? It goes Ooh, back yeah. to the conversation like okay. around the face like of the that. league. Okay. As like it stands that. right now, okay. this list is fluid. Okay. Yeah. This list is fluid. It's fluid. Yeah. It's fluid. I don't think he's winning MVP <laughs> this year, but he can win finals Love MVP. That. that matters to being the face of the league. Uh, and I'd move this to four, and I'd put LeBron at five. Let me say this to Shannon real quick. Let me tell you why the, the, yes. the, the C grade is bogus. Because you wouldn't take anything off. You see what I'm saying? These are storylines, okay? You wouldn't take anything off. Let me tell you why I have Milwaukee, uh, Giannis and, and, and Damian at four. It's in Milwaukee. You Listen. said storylines. I'm the journalist here. This is what I do. Yeah. When, when I'm talking about storylines, let, let me ask you, you but you who, have to take who, us who, there. Who would get, who would get gonna... more? Who would get more clips? Who clicks, would get more clicks. Uh, clicks, 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 whatever the hell it is? Who would get yeah. more views or whatever? LeBron or Milwaukee? You understand? I'm just oh, storylines now. You, it didn't say good. It says storyline. Yeah. That's what we said. Yeah. Here. This but, is what I But I do. remember when you broke. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. But I remember when you broke the news. When you broke the story about Dame going to Milwaukee, you were standing all on top of the table at the seaport. So don't do that, Stephen A. Whatever, well, that, that, that story that day. High scoring outputs. Is this good for the NBA? Break it down for me. Well, I, I think a question here is, is the perception of no defense bad for the NBA. In some ways, I think that's a, a sort of follow-up question to it. I, I think the perception is that there's all these rules that favor the offense mm -hmm. and that no one tries on defense. And I, I think there's a lot more nuance to this than people are talking about. And I've tried over the last few months to try to explain things on my podcast. I want to start with one simple concept, and that's just space. The amount of space that has been created by the three-point evolution, the amount of space mm -hmm. that has been created by teams embracing analytics, and the fact that players, as they come into the NBA, what's the number one thing you have to develop? You have to develop a three-point shot, and that is not just positionally, that is across the board. Shannon, when I talk about space, I, I, I'm a novice. I'm a casual football fan. I love the NFL, but I'm a casual. <laughs> I got, a, I got a quick question for you, then I want to dive into this. Okay. When do you have more space? When did you feel like you had more space? Uh, uh, third and long from, from the 50-yard line in a spread offense or third and goal from the four-yard line, yard line? Yeah. Empty, when we emptied the backfield, we went five wide. So right. there's nobody in the backfield. We got five wide receivers. There's space everywhere. Right. And nobody is condensed inside. Right, and so outside of the 49ers and their condensed formations that Kyle Shanahan runs, for the most part, the NFL has also embraced space and spread it, offenses, yes, right? And yes, There are some yes. rules, some nuances within the rules in the NFL about what the defense can and can't do, but scoring is up Correct. because of space, Yes, right? So yes. what is what is this space done in the NBA? What is the three-point revolution done in the NBA? It's actually allowed for more points in the paint. Everybody says, all everybody does, Steve A brought it up with the Celtics, all anybody does is shoot threes. All anybody does is shoot threes. No. Here's the deal, here's the deal with the three-point shot. The, the year that the Warriors won 73 games, they took 31.6 threes per game. Philly, who I talked about earlier not shooting enough threes, ranks 25th this year at 31.6 points per game. Teams, on average just from 2016, are shooting 11 more threes per game and shooting them at a higher percentage. So the threat of the three-point line and the three-point shot has created space at the rim. You go down the list, guess what? Post-ups are way down. Drives are way up. Points in the paint are way up. I got these numbers right here. The Pacers this year, number one in the league in points in the paint. 57.3 points in the paint. 
In 96-97, the first year of tracking data that we have, the number one team was the Washington Bullets at 48.7. The number 30 team this year, the Memphis Grizzlies, who are a terrible basketball team, would rank fifth in the NBA in points in the paint in 96-97. We've eliminated the mid-range shot. We've eliminated that. Yes. We've focused on threes, and we've focused on the rim. And people talk about fouling. I, I'm going to go off on a tangent here. People talk about fouling. Guess what? NBA players have never shot less free throws in the modern NBA era. You go back to the 1980s, 1990s, 2000, 2010, 2020s. It is trending down across the board in terms of free throw rate. It's not the fouling. It's not the free throws. My second question to you, Shannon, is let's go back to space. Everybody talks about freedom of movement. Like, mm -hmm. you can't chuck cutters anymore. Well, nobody's in the paint to chuck. Nobody's in the paint to reroute. <laughs> We're not running flex offense. We're not the Boston Celtics in the 1980s where you have three post players, one on one block, two on the other block, back screening for each other so that one of them can post up. That's not how the offense works anymore. So, yeah, I think you can add in some rules that would favor the offense, and I'll get to that in a second. But in those same, in those same questions, what is it easier, when is it easier for an offensive player to have freedom of movement, Shannon? That same scenario, third and 12 from the 50-yard line or third and goal from the four-yard line. It's obviously third yeah. and 12 when you're <laughs> yeah. spread. It's harder to yeah. put hands and bodies on people. That's why there's so many drives to the paint to score because mm -hmm. everybody's so spread out. It's hard to put your hands on someone in today's NBA. Now, real quick, sure, please. I want to get into no, some no, rules because no. I want to just – I want to – The hand-checking part, like that rule evolved a lot, right? Mm -hmm. So in 94 – uh, you couldn't hand check in the backcourt. 2004, they eliminated altogether. All right. Offensives have gotten better and better and better. And it's really comes down to strategy and analytics over the last, let's say, 10 years, I think, is the inflection point, particularly with the Warriors. OK, so you can bring back hand checking. And I'm look, if you want to bring back hand checking, that's fine. But just 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 to be clear, hand checking was never allowed in the scoring area. It was not allowed below the free throw line. OK, correct. You couldn't hand check in the scoring area. All right. If you hand-checked an offensive player, you guys watch basketball. If you hand-checked an offensive player right now, he's at the top. Luke is at the top of the key. James Harden's at the top of the key. Kevin Durant's at the top, top of the key. Jalen Brunson's at the top of the key, getting into his dribble package. And you put your hand on him, which, by the way, again, you couldn't just put your hand on someone and leave it there. It's called a check for a reason. It's a hand check. Do you not think they're skilled enough and smart enough that they've practiced this enough that they're literally just going to gather the ball and go into their shooting motion and get a, get a shooting foul? Like wow. hand checking is not James hand Hard. checking is not the answer. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you what I think the answer is. Luca has talked with me about this twice now. The answer to me, if you want to give the defense a, 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 a rule that would favor the defense, we need to get the rid of the defensive three second rule. We need to go to the FIBA rule where you can be in the paint for as long as you want. Why was the defensive rule put in place in the first place? Why was that? Because we got rid of illegal defense, which had all these convoluted rules about where you could be on the, on the defensive end based on where your offensive player was. Why did we put it in there? We put it in to create space. Now there's too much space. Let's put it back in. Let's put in the three seconds. You are allowed to be in the paint as a defender for three seconds. I, I'd love them to implement that rule, and I think it would help the defense.